Well, some people were frightened with, uh, about bats. I remember growing up, girls used to freak out about bats because they always thought they're going to fly into my hair. They, yeah, they don't, well, they don't do that. They don't do that. I mean, it, sometimes they're flying animals. They make mistakes sometimes. So some, every once in a while, they'll, they'll hit a person by accident, but they don't, they're not attracted to hair or anything like that. And one of the interesting things that happens is if a bat gets into a house, the bat will fly and try to find an exit. And bats have to be flying. My postdoc was on how bats stay in the air, like the, the biomechanics of generating lift and thrust and all that stuff. And a bat has to have a certain velocity in order to keep in the air. It can't hover. Some bats can hover, but not the ones in Canada. And so a bat is flying through your cabin or your cottage or whatever. It comes to a wall and it turns around because it, it can't go that way anymore. And as it turns around, it stalls like an airplane would if it stopped and it falls and then it gets speed over the wings and then it starts to get lift again and then it flies back up into the air. And so if you have this idea in your head that the bat wants to go in your hair, it just seems to keep diving at you. Every time it gets to a wall, it turns around and comes right back at you. And it's okay. not doing that. It's just trying to stay in the air. So there are th there are these misconceptions that you can kind of understand how they got okay. carried forward. But um, no, they don't try to go in your hair. All right, they're not, gonna, they're not going to go in your hair, and they're not going to suck your blood either. Well, most of them won't. There are three species of vampire bats that do drink blood. Are you serious? Uh, yeah, yeah, they live in Central and South America. I did my PhD on, on one kind oh of vampire bat. Oh, my God. I know, I know. But they mo usually don't feed on people. Usually they feed on cattle. They're, they're pretty good that way, but uh, they do exist, yeah. I had bats uh, flying around my, my backyard. My, my friend and I used to come over, and we would sit in the, in the backyard at night, and, and they would come out just after dusk, and they would fly around. I mean, it was just quite, quite fascinating. Yeah. They never bothered me or my friend. Right. And there were two of them, and they used to come around. And they were, and they were there like every year for a couple of years. And then about a year or two years ago, suddenly they, they just disappeared. Where did they go? Yeah, I mean, there's – so in the winter, the bats all go into either hibernation or they migrate away. And so, yeah. you, can't, you know, because they eat mosquitoes and they eat bugs. And so – Right. In the winter, there's none of that. So they don't, they're not flying around looking for them because it's winter. But in terms of the summer numbers, those numbers have been declining across Canada because of a disease of the bats. It's a fungal disease mm. called white nose syndrome. And it's, it's, it, has, it doesn't hurt people at all, but it's like, it's kind of like athlete's foot that you get on your feet except the bats get it when they're hibernating. And so it makes them really itchy and they, they don't make it through the hibernation because they keep waking up to scratch themselves. So white it's been nose hurting syndrome. Numbers. Yeah, white, white nose, nose syndrome. Yeah. It sounds like a coke addict. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, to be honest, being a coke addict is better than having white nose syndrome for a bat because yeah. the lethality is like 95%. It's crazy.